Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to see what exactly are RDDs, what are data frames and what exactly is our data set and as well as when to use an RDD, when to use a data frame and when to use a data set. So let's move ahead and see exactly what are RDDs, data frames and data sets. So when we talk about RDDs, RDDs are exactly called as resilient distributed data sets. Now, when we talk about resilient distributed data set, it is nothing but it is a first form of data structure that Spark uses. So if you talk about any other particular programming language, let's say Python or, you know, any, any, any XYZ language in Python, let's say lists, right? What are lists? Lists are a certain type of a data structures, a data types, which are actually used inside your Python, right? Similarly, when you talk about Spark, right? What type of data structures do you use? So RDDs is one of that. So when you talk about RDDs, these are the lowest level APIs which are available in Spark. So when actually Spark was built, right, the first version of Spark itself was built on top of this RDD. So whenever you had to communicate anything, you will use resilient distributed data sets. But eventually, right now, uh, you know, in your day-to-day -day programming or in, to, in your day-to-day -day work, we do not use resilient distributed data set that often. Mostly we would go with the data frames. RDDs are used, but they are very restricted because we have a better version of RDDs or the second data structure that came in, which was data frame. And also we have data sets. So mostly we use uh, data frames and sometimes we also go for the data sets as well. Now, when we talk about resilient distributed data sets, it is available in Java, Python, Scala, as well as in R. So this particular, uh, you know, RDD API is available in all the languages. Now let's move ahead and I will exactly show you how exactly we can create RDD. So when you talk about an RDD, right, I have already discussed about, you know, uh, Spark context in my previous video, right? So if you see over here, SC dot parallelize. Now SC is nothing but the Spark context. So I explained you that we use Spark context to create RDDs as well, right? So here using SC dot parallelize and providing in, you know, my data set over here, you can actually see that I have created an RDD. So the output of this is nothing but it is an RDD. Right. And when I uh, and uh, I have used another transformation on top of this RDD, like RDD one dot collect as map. And then I have created another RDD out of it. So eventually, if you see over here, RDD is just this part, right, where I am creating an RDD using SC dot parallelize. Right. In the similar way, you can also create RDDs using the text file. So if you see iris1 is equals to sc dot text file and here I'm providing the path to my text file where my text file exactly resides. So this is nothing but this is again iris1 is again an RDD and you can see how the data looks like. So eventually, you know, RDDs can RDDs can be creating using sc dot parallelize method, sc dot text file method and also you know, our RDD can be converted to a data frame, which we are going to talk about in a minute. And the data frames can also be converted back to an RDD. So I hope you understand what exactly is an RDD. So if you have any input data set, you load it into an RDD, you load it into a data frame and all the transformations you apply on top of that particular RDD or a data frame. So this is what your RDD is all about. So when we talk about RDD, you know, we already know that Spark is an in-memory computation, right? Spark has a lazy evaluation. Spark is fault tolerant, especially, uh, you know, your RDDs, they are fault tolerant, they are immutable in nature. And especially when I talk about these particular, you know, uh, points that we have for RDDs or features of the RDD, remember that in every programming language, whatever data set, you, uh, whatever data structure you use. So let's say you use a list or a tuple, you use a dictionary in Python, it has certain features associated to it, right? Inside a list, you can have numeric as well as, you know, you can have string values, right? And that is a feature of a list. Now, similarly, when you talk about RDDs, right? RDDs also have all of these features, right? So uh, similarly, when you go to the data frame, data frame has its own features. So when you go to the data set, data set has its own set of features as well. 
now when you talk about data frames api right so data frame api came after rdd it is a little higher level api which internally uses rdd right internally it is still using rdd but it is pretty much optimized so whenever we talk about spark execution plan the dag creating the physical and the logical plan you know uh, especially when you write code in data frame you know it is optimized spark actually optimizes that particular code write it, it writes it in a put in an rdd format itself right so data frame apis are pretty quicker than the rdds and especially whenever you try to work on data frames they're very easy to work on if you are coming from a sql background where you know the sql queries it will be very easy for you to catch up on the data frame rather than rdds because rdd is a low level programming right so writing any particular program or any set of statement on rdd is little less comprehendable for any developer rather than for the data frames api and also the output of the data frame right can actually be thought of as a row of data set now data set is the third part of it right first we discussed rdd then we have data frame and the third is a data set so even data frame when you talk about this data frame it can also be thought of as row of data sets right and the data set is the third part that we are going to discuss now when you talk about data frames right let me show you how do the data frames looks like how can we create a data frame and all that part so when you talk about a data frame the output of a data frame is mostly tabular in structure right and when I, whenever i have to write a data as a data frame you can actually see that i can use spark api right so if you can see spark dot read dot csv so if it's a csv file i can read it as a csv if it's a parquet file i can read it as a parquet file if it's a json file i can read it as a json and then i can provide my path over here i can provide my separator i can provide another options like header option right but when you talk about rdds in that okay i'll come to that part later but eventually you can actually see that this is how we can create a data frame you can also create a data frame using spark context but here since we are using databricks i already have discussed about spark context and session in my previous video so here we can simply use spark.read api to create a data frame now the output of this is nothing but it's a data frame right and you can actually see this is how the structure of my data frame looks like when i'm saying header is equals to true it will actually take the header from my file itself so this is just to give you an idea do not go in depth right now on the transformation part for this particular video but just try to understand the flow now when i talk about the data frame right this is the data frame that we have got or we have created at the top you can actually see the output is very tabular in structure so this is what the data frame is about it is pretty much tabular in structure it is easy to understand right rather than the output of an rdd right so let me go back and you can actually also understand when we talk about data frames and rdds right data frames and rdds they are pretty much uh, used for processing of the data and uh, when you talk about data sets right data sets are very similar to the data frame so the, uh, there is a very little distinction when you talk about data sets and the data frame data sets remember that you can only create data sets in the java and in scala you cannot use python and sql for creations of the data set right the major difference although you can you know put on 10 differences but the major differences between data set and a data frame is that the data sets are strongly typed we are going to discuss about this what does it actually mean right data sets are very type safe uh, type safe so let me go back and actually show you about the type safe part of the data frames and data sets so when you talk about uh, data sets right i already told you you cannot do it in python right python in python you cannot use data sets right that is the basic nature of uh, the python as a language now when you talk about uh, data set and data frame since we can use it in scala i am putting uh, all the commands over here in scala so that i can show you the functioning of the data set so first what i have done is i have created a case class employee where i have given the schema right i have given the name as my column 
age as my column, ID as a column and department as a column and I have also given the data types over here. Now when you talk about val EMP data, now this is nothing, this is just the data set that I have which I want to use to create RDD, uh, which I want to create, uh, which I want to use to create RDD data frame as well as data set. Now once I have this data set, right, once I have this data set, what I can do is I can simply say spark dot spark context dot make RDD. Now using this make RDD and passing in my data that I have at the top, which I've manually created at the top, I can simply create one RDD over here. Now similarly to create a data frame, I, I already told you that you can use the RDD itself to create a data frame, right? So I'm using the same RDD which I have created at the top and I'm simply saying dot to data frame. Now what this will do, this will, this will make my RDD into my data frame, right? Now when you talk about data set, now same RDD which I have created at the top, I'm using it to create a data set. Now for the data set, I have to use 2DS. So now you will actually see even the programming style for the data frame and the data set is very much similar. So right now, if you see, you have an RDD, you have a data frame, you have a data set, right? You have all three of them. Now, let's say I have employee data set, right? This is the data set that I have created over here. Now, on top of this data set, I want to apply any transformation, let's say a filter transformation, and this filter transformation is probably on the age column. So let's say I want to get filter the employees whose age is greater than 24. Now the moment I run this, right, you can actually see what has happened. I did not get any error. It has, you know, completely understood what what the statement is about. It understood that, okay, the we, we have to filter the employee data set where employee age is greater than 24. But when I talk about the data frame, right, now here what I'm doing, I'm using the data frame, I'm simply, same operation I'm applying, dot filter, and I'm saying employee age greater than 24. But now where here you see is, you get an error over here. It says that the value age is not a member of org.apache.spark.sql.row. Now what does this mean? This means that the output which is coming coming from the data frame, right? It is spark.sql.row, right? Now, in this case, what has happened is it is not able to recognize the data type. In this case, what you have to do is you have to typecast it. When I say you have to typecast it, you actually have to make sure that this knows which data type it is, right? You have to make sure that it, it is typecasting it. You have to convert it into, it into an integer and then do a comparison. So this is the major difference between your data set and your data frame API as well. So your data set API is type safe. It already knows that, okay, it is an integer data type. I am fine. I understood that your employee.age is an integer right but if you see over here it does not understand this because the type itself is a sql dot row type now in this case what you will do you are going to make sure that you typecast it and for that we can actually say that get as integer and here i'm passing my age column and then i'm saying greater than 24 and that is when you can actually see that it has it has not given an error so this is what your uh, you know type safe actually means in your data frame in your data frame and the data set apis so this was a major difference right and let's go ahead and see exactly you know few more differences the data representation between an rdd data frame and data set you've already seen an rdd right it is nothing but it is collection of element when you talk about data frame it is a tabular collection of element where each uh, element you can describe it as a data set now data set in itself is a kind of a combination of rdd and the data frame you can describe it in a tabular structure now talking about the type safety right i have already discussed the data frame are not type safe however rdds and data sets are actually type safe right when you talk about programming language RDDs and uh, you know your data frame are pretty much available in Scala, Python, R as well as in Java. But when you talk about data sets, data sets are only available in Java, Java and Scala. 
whenever you have to read a particular file right in case of rdds you have to describe the schemas manually you have to say that okay this is my schema right and take the schema but when you talk about data frames and data set you always have an option to uh, you know describe your header to take the schema directly from the file right and similarly when you talk about any kind of operations like aggregation operations now rdd is the lowest level of programming uh, that is described in spark it is little slower in terms of aggregation so if you have to perform any group buys uh, or windows rdd tends to perform little slower than your data frames and your data set right because rdd uses java serialization to encode the data which is very expensive right but in case of data frames and data set there is no need for the java serialization and encoding because all the executions are happening on your java virtual machines right so that is why aggregations are little expensive a little uh, you know more time consuming on rdds rather than your data frames and data sets now the another question that might come to your mind is when to use data frames when to use rdds and when to use data sets now a very short answer to answer to that is typically when whenever you are working with a huge unstructured data right in that case you might want to use rdds right whenever you want to have a very uh, good control over the transformation you know the actions that you are trying to perform whenever you know uh, you want to have a good control of performance and optimization in your hand in that case as well you can go ahead and use rdds whenever you want you know to uh, whenever you do not have to care about how the data actually looks like you don't have to worry about the uh, the tabular structure of the data you can easily understand it even without having it in a tabular format you can go ahead with rdds and of course performance wise and the optimization wise it will be slower because by default spark does not provide too many optimization methods on rdds now when you talk about data frames you know you can go ahead with the data frames in fact that is the data frames are the ones which are used the most uh, they are very much performance optimal and you have multiple uh, you know inbuilt methods you have multiple optimization techniques which are provided by the databricks itself to optimize your code when you are writing it via our data frame in fact you have the whole dag scheduler that helps you to uh, you know optimize your code right and whenever you want to represent your data in a tabular structure and you want to have a e easy sql like querying kind of uh you know the code representation in that case you can go ahead with the data frame now when you talk about data sets right make sure like the major point over here is whenever you want to have a highly performant a performance optimal code along with the type safety right when type safety is very important in that case we go ahead with the data sets generally right but the data sets they are not available in python right they are only available when you are working with spark scala so i hope you like this particular video and thank you so much for being till here do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel